Hi, Lori Montre here with the Freedom Program. And today I want to talk to you about eating for weight loss versus eating for health. Now, if you had a dollar for every time you've heard that you can't be healthy unless you lose weight, you'd be one rich lady. Whether it was your doctor, a well-intentioned loved one, commercials on television or social media, the message is loud and clear that your weight is causing or will cause health issues. Now these overt and sometimes subtle messages have created a story in your mind that number one, your health is dependent on you losing weight, and number two, and this is a big one, you're not okay the way you are. Now this story then informs your thoughts, your emotions, and ultimately your actions. Now, I don't know about you, but feeling that I'm not okay the way I am or that I have to do something that I've been struggling to do for years or even decades in order to be healthy puts me in a pretty grim state. So let's look at this for just a second. So let's say you're in your doctor's office and he starts, he or she, you know, starts telling you that your blood pressure is a little high, you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, or that your back or knee pain is due to your weight and you need to do something quick before the consequences get more dire. Um, and then they give you some fantastic advice like eat less, move more, right? So next for you, probably what happens is a cascade of pretty ugly thoughts, you know? Why did I let myself get to this place? I'm heavier than I've ever been. My health is being affected. Um, gosh, I really gotta get control over myself. These kinds of thoughts naturally lead to fear, frustration, self-deprecation, pessimism, not good stuff. So later when you're making dinner, right, the conversation from the doctor's office is playing in the back of your mind. And you think, what difference does it make? I've been trying to lose weight for years, right? Why would this time be any different? These thoughts or others like it make you feel pretty crappy and you end up overeating. That extra food helps to numb the uncomfortable feelings that are coming from your thoughts. And now there's no question that approaching your health journey from a place of I'm not okay and I need to achieve something I've already been trying so hard to do is not motivating. It fa in fact, it takes you to an ugly place mentally and emotionally. It's going to heighten the need for your coping mechanism. Hello, chips, ice cream, extra carbs. But you may be saying, I can't deny that I don't feel great because of the extra weight. And the markers from the doctor are showing me that my weight is actually impacting my health. I get that. I'm not suggesting that you just close your eyes, resign yourself to not feeling your absolute best, right? Or being the healthiest version of yourself. But what I want to offer you today is a new perspective from which to approach this journey. And that perspective is, number one, you are absolutely okay the way you are today. And number two, you don't have to lose weight to significantly improve your health. I'll say that again. You don't have to lose weight to significantly improve your health. Now stick with me here. Lots of people tell me, you know, if I could just lose the weight in the first place, I would feel so good I'd be motivated to keep it off. Now. I believe that once a person has done the work to understand their relationship with food, developed new neural pathways to overcome their previous habits, that that's true, right? They would be able to maintain their weight if they had been able to do that, those work, learn the skills to do that work. Um, because one of the biggest factors in their emotional eating is the fact that they feel awful in general and about themselves. Now, just like the conversation in the doctor's office causes you to think depressing thoughts like um, feel really crappy and want to emotionally eat, feeling into your awesomeness and knowing that there are plenty of things you can do to for your health without having to lose weight first, you would have a different set of thoughts. And these thoughts would be positive. You know, maybe they sound something like, um, I'm amazing. I have, yes, I have used food in the past as a pattern to deal with emotions, and I got used to that. I created a habit around it. Um, but that doesn't define me. I have a plastic brain that is capable of forming new pathways that support new ways of being. And in the meantime, as I make these shifts, I can honor myself and my incredible strength and desire to change. 
Now, if you also believed that you had the power to make significant improvements to your health without needing to lose weight, you'd likewise feel empowered instead of defeated. Every step you take, every glass of water you drink, every superfood you add into your life can be a cause for celebration. Without evaluating yourself on how little you ate, you can just get jazzed over all the little things that you can easily do that nourish and support your body. And this has a domino effect. You start to take a little action and you feel a little better, which makes you want to take a little more action. The ironic truth is that this new perspective that I'm offering you is going to cause you to lose weight. You'll be doing the things with the vibrational energy that supports you in your efforts instead of tears you down. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but by letting go of what you have done wrong and the punishment mindset, you're going to go so far. In all honesty, look, I know weight loss is not the easiest thing in the world. I get that. In order to be successful, you need to get to the bottom of your challenges. And that's what I teach in my freedom program with the five pillars to effective permanent weight loss. And those are self-acceptance and compassion for the person you are today, even while you work to change. Number two, learning how to work with your brain to form new habits, develop new neural pathways that support the behavior that you want to take. Number three, aligning your thoughts with the behavior that you want. Number four, learning emotional resiliency, which allows you to stand there in the place with your uncomfortable emotions and process them without the need for extra food. And number five, learning the right nutrition for your body, because every body is different, right? And when you do these things, um, these, especially with the nutrition, that's going to allow you to feel energetic. It's going to allow you to end cravings. It's going to allow you to lose excess weight. And these five pillars are addressed from a strong foundation of a healthy, well-regulated nervous system, which means your place of peace and calm. That's what I teach in the program. And this is how to overcome unwanted habits with food so that losing weight is possible in a way that it didn't feel possible in the past. But what I'm sharing today in this video is a new and powerful perspective in your approach to changing the motivation for, for the actions that you're trying to take. And this new perspective is pure gold on this journey. So let's review what I talked about and what I want you to take away. Number one, your underlying beliefs inform your thoughts and emotions and your thoughts and emotions dictate your actions. Change your underlying beliefs to reflect the action you want to take and your action becomes easy to take. The second thing is when you try to make change from to your habits, right, from a place of not being okay the way you are, needing to lose the weight in order to um, help you improve your health, your thoughts and emotions are low vibrational, which is another way of saying you feel like crap. Nothing good happens when you feel like crap. In fact, you're much more likely to reach for food, your coping mechanism, when you feel that way. So my suggestion for you, and I'm going to give you a tool for it as well, is the following. Embrace your powerful, awesome, capable self and know that even if you never lost another pound in your life, which will not happen if you're doing this, by the way, you are still whole and complete and beautiful. And number two, focus on improving your health by adding in those superfoods, getting great rest, drinking your water, all the things that you can do pretty easily that are can make a huge impact on your health without feeling that desperate need to lose weight. The research shows that weight is not actually the biggest predictor of health. It just so happens that many or most of the people that are overweight are also not taking care of themselves in healthy ways. It's their lifestyle and food choices that are more of a factor than their weight. So by taking the focus off the weight, putting it on doing what you can little by little to improve your health, you're going to reach your goals a lot faster and you're going to end up losing weight. Um, and if you want to learn more about that research that I'm referring to, I really encourage you to start with the book Health at Any Size. Now, I'm not saying that losing weight isn't awesome, but let's put it in perspective. Taking the pressure off yourself reminds you that you have more power over your health and your journey than it may feel like right now. And that leads to more desired thinking, more desired feeling, and more desired action. 
So I mentioned I have a tool for you, and this is an actual tool from my Freedom Program that I modified for these purposes here. And while it sounds super simple, it will help you shift into a more relaxed attitude with weight loss. So I call this tool Cultivating Patience with the Process. This is an exercise that you're gonna do for the next seven days, knowing that you can certainly continue it as long as it feels good to do so. And I encourage you to continue it as long as you'd like. Now, when it comes to weight loss, like we've been talking about, it can be really difficult to allow it to take place on the timetable that is most natural. We often tempted to push ourselves or weigh ourselves conscious, conscious, constantly, right? To make sure that we're seeing the results. And then even when things are going pretty well and pounds are coming off relatively quickly, it still isn't a good idea to put so much emphasis on the weight loss aspect of this journey. So the exercise that I want you to try on over the next seven days is really meant to help you cultivate patience around this mysterious process of transformation. Learning how to, you know, do this work, how to care for yourself, how to process your emotions without the help of food. This is an act of personal growth, and we just want to recognize that this work and the weight loss that will follow will take the course that it will, right? We want to, we want to respect and honor your journey and let progress come as it unfolds. So in order to do that, I have two steps to this exercise. Step one is to craft a statement that respects the real goal of your journey as you see it. So rather than saying, my goal is to lose 20 pounds in the next three months, okay, your goal can be something more like the following, okay? The goal of my transformation or my new relationship with food is to transform my old ways of thinking, return to my natural state of peace and calm. In addition, I want to develop a healthy and natural relationship with food and learn to adapt my thinking in ways that serve me. I'll fuel my body in ways that feel good and nourishing. And I know that weight loss will be a byproduct of reaching these goals, but I'm willing to be patient as this unfolds for me. So that's just one example. That's just some things that you could include in your own personal statement of what you really want that goes far beyond losing X number of pounds. All right, so draft that statement. What do you really want with respect to your relationship with food and your relationship with your body? And then step two is simply write down two actions that you took each day that helped you inch towards that goal. So just have a little sheet, maybe in your journal, maybe somewhere else where you say, today I'm thankful I took the following steps. Maybe that is, um, I drank eight glasses of water, I walked for five minutes, I avoided the second cup of coffee, I didn't get a donut when I went to the plate. Whatever step it is, just recognize it and celebrate it and know that these steps help to move you in the direction you want to go. Celebrate the wins and you'll be able to take more of them. Each day I want you to reread that overarching goal, that statement that you crafted, and then write the two actions that you're thankful for having taken. Do this exercise, guys. Honestly, you will feel a shift from doing this each day this week, okay? Um, I'd love to hear your experience with this what you think of this topic in general. Um, so respond to this and let me know. If you're feeling ready to work with me to overcome your food and body challenges, what are you waiting for, right? Let's get started, let's do this thing. Um, I invite you to schedule a free discovery call with me and let's just get you started on your journey to food and body freedom. And you can do that at Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y.com forward slash talk to Lori. All right. I look forward to hearing what your experience is and how this exercise goes for you and how you can be a little more gentle and patient with yourself throughout this process. Thanks for watching.